between IndyCar and Red Bull Advanced Technologies on the design of a safety initiative for the NTT IndyCar Series competitors. Just two weeks ago, in the IndyCar Grand Prix here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course, IndyCar debuted the Advanced Frontal Protection Device in competition to advance driver cockpit protection. This safety component will be used by all competitors at all series events, including this Sunday's 103rd running of the Indianapolis 500, presented by Gainbridge, and for the remainder of this 2019 season. The AFP device was the first of two phases planned by IndyCar in regard to driver cockpit protection, and today our guests will share the plans of phase two of this process. Joining us for the announcement are from your right to left, Red Bull Racing Development Engineer, Andy Damer. Andy. Red Bull Advanced Technologies Head of Composites and Structures, Ed Collings. Ed. Oh. IndyCar President, Jay Fry. Jay. And five-time defending NTT IndyCar Series champion, Scott Dixon of Chip Ganassi Racing. Well, we will open with Jay to announce yeah. the partnership, exactly what is phase two of this safety initiative for advanced driver cockpit protection and when it will go into effect. Jay? Uh, well, thank you, Mike. And first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, it's been obviously a very long month, so we appreciate all of you. We appreciate all you and your family's sacrifices for being here, so thank you. Um, we're very proud to announce today that IndyCar has partnered with, as Michael said, with Red Bull Advanced Technologies on what we think will be a new industry standard for driver protection. It's called the Aero Screen, and that's one of the things we're probably going to, that'll be the next phase to come up with a name. Uh, but a huge thanks to Christian Horner, Jonathan Wheatley, Andy, Ed, everyone at Red Bull, uh, Red Bull Advanced Technologies for their enthusiasm and commitment to assisting the car and our teams and drivers. We also want to thank our longtime partner, Dallara, uh, Andrea Pantremoli, Luca Pascasi for their continued support as well, and uh, as well as Bill Pappas and Tino Bell of IndyCar for their tireless efforts in this project. So the plan is to, um, we'll have a prototype in probably 30 days. We'll have uh, real pieces in another 60 days. I uh, get them on cars this summer to test, and then at some point, um, or going into the off-season around November, so we'll have one for each entry. So the plan is to uh, put this on all the cars in 2020, which is our goal. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. We'll move over to Ed and Andy, and either of you can lend your expertise to the next couple of questions. Why did IndyCar come to Red Bull Advanced Technologies for this project, and what unique expertise did they bring to you? Um, I'll answer this one, that's okay. Yep. So, um, we've got experience with back in 16, beginning of 16, working with um, uh, the FIA on, a, on an aero, aero screen program, something similar called Canopy. <clears throat> I think the, the FIA asked for a number of companies to look at uh, protection devices. Uh, Halo was one of them, and uh, the, the windshield was another one. So, ourselves, another F1 team, um, looked at uh, designing a, a concept which we came up with. So we had experience of, of, uh, of working with um, uh, Perspex um, technologies and, and uh, um, safety devices. So we've got quite a lot of experience in the, in the, the FI didn't use, use the system in the end, but it chose to use the Halo system. Um, and I think that was later on in that year, we got contacted by IndyCar to see, see if there was a, an interest and see if we could share our, our, uh, our IP with them. Fantastic. A, a little bit about how this aero screen works to reduce potential injury to the drivers and some of the complexities involved with this aero screen. Yes, so uh, we've created a system that protects the driver from a, a very large range of threats, perhaps more so than any other driver protection system in other series. Uh, IndyCar is a unique series uh, with limited runoff from the edge of the track and it was important that we could protect the drivers from smaller debris as well as very large items. So we have a system uh, with the screen that can protect from smaller debris and then a very strong structure around the top of that screen uh, and with a, uh, a strut in the centre that can deflect large items such as a, a whole wheel upright assembly um, at, at very high speed. Um, so that's the key attribute of the design, but then we've had to manage lots of other things to make sure we don't introduce other compromises. So we've had to design around the, the just the simple things, towing and lifting the vehicles, but also a lot of uh, more scientific work in terms of preventing reflections that could um, distract the driver. 
Uh, we have to make sure that we don't have any fogging occurring in, in any damper, you know, more humid environments. Uh, and many other attributes. There's a small, small uh, set of examples, really, of, of a very detailed study that we've undertaken, my team uh, in Milton Keynes in the UK. Thank you. Scott, this obviously directly affects you as a driver in the NTT IndyCar series. Your thought on this windscreen, Red Bull Advanced Technologies, and what it means to you as a driver in the series? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's always been very important for you know, the NTT IndyCar series to be at the forefront of you know, safety initiatives, and, and uh, it's, it's been uh, a work in progress for a long time. You know, had run the initial aero screen, um, you know, we, we felt that you know, for the driver, it, it worked well. You know, there was there was no issues with it. Um, you know, I think cooling was maybe the only thing that was really uh, something that was a problem to start with, but but uh, something that could be fixed easily. Uh, as it went through testing things, you know, I think we we uh, we, as I said, you know, the drivers in IndyCar always um, you know wanted to to make sure that if we did run something, that it was going to be something great, not something rushed, not something that uh, hadn't been tested well, and and uh, you know. I, it's exciting to, to have uh, Red Bull Advanced Technologies partner. Um, we know the powerhouse that you guys are and, and what you can provide and you know, the forefront of motor racing industry. So it's, uh, it's exciting for, the, for all of us drivers. And I think something that uh, will be extremely exciting for, for many categories. You know, we, we've seen other versions of this, um, but I think this one covers a lot more bases. Thank you, Scott. We will open the floor for questions. Please state your name and your affiliation. Remember the IMS staff. to uh, get back to his duties here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in that number nine Chip Ganassi racing PNC machine. So if our first question could be directed for Scott, please. Bruce Martin, NBCSports.com. Scott, you drove the prototype here, the previous windscreen uh, project. Um, how much different is this in terms of the height? Uh, it looks like it's a bit more, a bit taller than the other one was, and also this will have a piece in the middle, whereas before it was kind of one concave uh, piece of glass or safety glass. Yeah, I think the, the piece in the middle will be, you know, uh, something you won't notice too much. It's very similar to the addition that we have right now uh, as far as, you know, line of sight for the driver. Uh, but I think it, it, it uh, until we get it into running conditions, you know, through the summer months, um, you will we'll obviously pick up some differences. But I think this adds more to it. It's structurally more sound. It is higher, creates you know obviously um, you know more room for error as well. So I think it's it's just a, a far better piece that has been improved from the original concept. Scott has another second or two if someone else has a question for Scott. Hi Scott, Mark Cipollone, Auto Racing One dot com. Um, as a driver, you have tear offs on your helmet if you get you know oil or whatever um, to clear your vision. Um, with the windscreen. You can only, I guess, pull off a tear off during pit stops. Do you pull off tear off that often, or is it very rare that you pull off a tear off? That it, you know, it might become an issue with the windscreen being dirty as a driver. Uh, it's it's fairly rare. You know, I think uh, Indy 500s you used to start with with many, you know, up to 15. But I think with with uh, you know, current day racing and maybe just how you know uh, you know sound the cars are now from mechanical failure. Or issues it seems that you know you really only use four or five but um, yeah it's it's uh, it is an added concern I think and one that we've brought up many times but we think we have you know uh, additions that, that, that will help with that um, you know and that's something probably down the road that you'll try to, to refine as well right, one more question for Scott Scott will let him go hi Scott uh, Ben Johnston Um will there be any different betwi difference between the oval kind of specification of it and the road course specification of the aero screen? From what I understand, no. So it might be out of for uh, you guys. It's a question for you guys. Same, same piece. It's the same, same structure. Yeah, that's really awesome. Thank you. Scott, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Good luck on Carburation Day and for the remainder of this weekend for the 103rd running at the Indianapolis 500. We'll now open the floor for the rest of the media. Two questions for the gentleman of Red Bull. Uh, number one, what I see, the driver is sitting very deep now with the windshield around him. In case of an accident, can the windshield be removed by the safety staff when the driver has to be all the way? Yeah. Removed from the cockpit? 
Yes, yes, certainly. This is one of uh, possibly 20, 25 topics that we've had to explore and come up with solutions working with the IndyCar safety team to ensure that they have a very fast uh, and prepared and practiced method of removing parts of the screen. Uh, we, we use the jaws of life that the IndyCar sponsor and they, they deliver the equipment that uh, is perfect for the job. And the second question is, in case of debris flying onto the windshield, can you tell more about the materials? It had to be very hard, very strong, right? Yes. What so, kind of material is it? So we have a combination of composite, composite materials, uh, very high strength carbon fiber, epoxy, and also titanium is being used. So really the state of the art technology. Alan Brewer, Racing Nation. Now, in the images you're showing us, the AFP device is still in place. Can you comment on the future of the AFP? For me? For, yeah. um, <coughs> well, the, it's it actually in phase two, which is a great job by the Rebel guys. Um, the AFP device comes off, and the frame for this screen just bolts onto it, so it's in the same spot. So that's so that's already been done. So the, the cars are already equipped for to take on this frame by taking off the AF, AFP device. Tucker White, SpeedwayMedia.com. Uh, Jay, this, forgive me if this isn't under your purview, but seeing as this, this, the theme of this conference is partnerships and working relationships, uh, it's clear that IndyCar must have some kind of work, working relationship with NASCAR, given that seeing that the air times are on track from NASCAR. Now. With that being said, like, in terms of scheduling, like, Double series, like IndyCar Cup events, like why is that not something we can ever do, do with IndyCar and NASCAR? Why is it something we never do? That? Um, well, we think we can do it, so we're, it's something we're exploring for down the road. So yeah, we're, we're certainly very interested in that. Like, why is it taking so long to finally get around? Why does it take so long? Uh, well, I think part of it's timing, right? The, the schedules. Um, there's different places we could do it. There's different, you know, there's broadcast partner situations. There's there's different things, but we started talking about it a couple years ago. Um, we're, you know, certainly interested in, in it. It's uh, got to be the right place and the right time of the year for both of us. So um, I think there's no reason why we can't. So it's definitely something we will have conversations about. Are you continuing? This is Patrick Steppen, Trackside Online. I'll be here your left, guys. Uh, it looks to be like this screen is taller than the previous aero screen, or is it the same height? as the one we previously seen. Yeah, sure. yeah, okay. So uh, part of our work has been to study previous crashes in the IndyCar series and to uh, detect where the helmet position was during those crashes. And one of the important parts of our design is that we don't put a very rigid structure in a, in a position where the helmet could make contact in a, in a high G instant. Um, so in order to deliver that, we've, we've created an exclusion zone where this device, this protection system, does not um, come into, doesn't enter that zone, so it wouldn't impede the driver's head. So it's important that we haven't introduced any compromises by adding this assembly onto the car. Uh, so as a result, that has defined the height of the device. Um, it's quite, quite similar to the previous previous uh, windscreen design, but particularly it's higher at the, the rear edge uh, in order to protect the driver more comprehensively than the, the earlier prototype would have done. Yeah, part of it I think it's too, it's, it's a little bit, but it's more of an optical illusion because this one has a frame, right? The one we test, the two we tested, or the one we tested at Phoenix and here last year, <coughs> excuse me, didn't have a frame, so it was clear. You didn't, you didn't see how tall it was. Well, then I guess that begs the question of the frame, is it high enough to not be a visual issue at, like, Texas Motor Speedway? Yes. The oval. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Bruce Meyer with NBCSports.com. Two questions for Jay. Uh, when did you start thinking Red Bull Technologies? I know that you used to be the Red Bull team owner in NASCAR. Well, that's did, you did, promoted did, me. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Did, that, <laughs> did that help you in saying, hey, here's a good company that we may want to look at to get involved yeah, in this well, project. No, they're, obviously they're great friends. We talk to them all the time. Um, when they came out with this, their application a couple years ago was like, that's very cool. That's that's kind of what we wanted to do. We had the same intent. Um, you know, the last couple of years we've tested our own version 
and earlier this year was like, we just, you know, we called them and said, we want what you have on your, your idea on our car. How can we do that? How can we work together? Um, they immediately jumped on it. It was that basically that day. We, you know, we, what's the next step? How is, how is it going to work? Uh, in the last 60 days, it's incredible the amount of work that they've done. Um, you know, again, we'll have a prototype here pretty soon. So it's, it's, this thing's rolling right along. Um, we're very confident in everything they're doing. Again, they're great friends. Uh, they've got you know, great pride and equity in what we're doing here. So we're excited to see the final product. And also from looking at it, I'm no aerodynamicist, but it looks like the aero numbers are certainly going to change uh, with it. Uh, do you have kind of an early indication from Tino? We Bell do. Um, yeah, staff, how much we'll yeah. The, the original one that we did was pretty neutral. Um, this one, there might be a little more drag. So it's something we have to, you know, that, that's part of the testing process we'll do. Uh, what we need to do if there is more to compensate for that. So it's a little bit, but it's, it's well worth it. Uh, Tim May, Columbus Dispatch. Jay, how much were you guys concerned, or I don't know if concerned is the right word, about the look of it? You know, people traditional yeah. open cockpit look. It almost looks like you could almost put a hatch on the top of it and close it totally. Yeah. But, uh, well, we think it's got kind of, well, very, very, that was, Certainly, because that was one of the first things with them. We thought theirs looked very cool. So it's like, how do we get that on our car? Um, and then when we remember when we did this car a couple years ago, we would put out we put out sketches for the car to the fans to see what their opinion were or was. And then we put out a rendering of the car. So the, this car, we remember we kind of reverse engineered it where we did aesthetics first and the performance was second. Um, so obviously we put all that effort into to the aero kit. So we wanted to make sure the screen matched that and they've done a phenomenal job looks I think you see it's it has a fighter jet kind of look to it so we're excited about that John A. Rutherford I've been here a while uh, yeah. what happens when you're running by you know behind a guy and he starts blowing oil and it covers that up with oil what? so uh, we are working with partners on the program. One of those is a tear-off supplier. Uh, so developing a, a tear-off material, and we can have a stack of a uh, very large number of tear-offs on the screen. Uh, currently working on some testing at the moment to ensure that we keep uh, very good visibility and, and avoid any distortion uh, while looking through that stack of tear-offs. But that's a solution. Where, to that. where do the tear-offs go? Across the front face. On the, on the, the track screen. when they pull when he pulls no, they'll it off. When, they, when they pit, they'll, yeah. pit, they'll tear oh, them off. Well, what if way. you've really covered up? And So you're saying you've got to make a pit stop. Yes. To clear your windshield. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark Cipollone from Motivation One. Um, again, a uh, question for the Red Bull guys. Um, your original windscreen was not chosen by the FIA for F1. They chose the Halo. My understanding, and I might be wrong, was it was because of strength. Does this frame, is it really a, comp is the frame, is the new design a combination of a halo and a windscreen together? And does the frame now make your solution strong enough that it would meet the FIA requirements? Well, the frame, <coughs> the frame that's there, it's, it's not a halo, but we're picking up from the, uh, the AFP point, and also we're picking up off the back of the, of the roll hoop, so it is extremely strong. Um, the loads that so the, the loads are equivalent, or, uh, well, they are equivalent, they are the same as the FIA halo loads, uh, so it's equally strong. I think part of the reason that the FIA didn't choose the aero screen initially wasn't so much the strength, but the time it would take to uh, design around the other concerns, the visibility, the reflections, um, and they felt that they didn't have time, they were under pressure to introduce something quickly and the halo removed some of those uh, concerns from the design process. But also, I'm talking to IndyCar at the beginning of this project, that does also remove some of the protection from smaller debris, which is something that IndyCar felt was essential for their series. Uh, so th we think that this is the right solution, uh, more comprehensive solution, more fitting for IndyCar. And uh, we're working hard with a, a good group of engineers to design out all those other issues that perhaps um, prevented the FIA from being able to react quickly enough. David Marsh from motorsport.com. Um, two questions, like Wolfgang, of course. Um, do we, uh, will that design uh, 
be the same uh, for the next generation car uh, is the first question and then uh, uh, and, or will it be more kind of like fed into the bodywork of the new car and then the second question is how how close to final is that uh, cockpit uh, cooling uh, vent on the nose well I think it is island. so the, for the future yes this will, will a hybrid of this will be on the next generation of car. It might be that one. It just depends. Um, and then the, part of the, the thing, so when you look at the Red Bull one, obviously the, there was an angle to it where it went into the monocoque, right? So this was, um, with this current car, we, we were not able to do that because it couldn't take the load there, basically, like Ed or Andy were saying. So they tied it in the roll hoop, which we thought was brilliant, right? So the roll hoop actually created this additional strength that was not really the original intent. So we've come up with, again, they've done a phenomenal job coming up with some different things. So, you know, it's, this thing's very, very strong. And the air, on the gentleman, Nate. Sorry, on the cockpit cooling. So that's something which um, we're working with Delara at the moment. Um, not sure whether this is the final, final version of cockpit cooling, but it's going to be very similar to it. We have time for one more question. I have only one you only have one this time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, again, a question for the gentleman from Red Bull Technologies. Uh, technically, getting the approval, can this system, the switch, you adopt it to any kind of open wheel car, or is it just done for IndyCar? I think it, it really depends on the, the chassis and the, the, the structural properties of the chassis. Um, of course, you could use a screen on, on any car. It's the, the frame which you, you, you've got to... Um, how, you, how you fit that frame onto the chassis. That's the, that's the question. C certainly a version of this concept could be fitted onto other racing seats. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you to the media as well. This will wrap up our press conference for the IndyCar Aero Screen announcement. Our thanks to Andy Dameron, yeah. Ed Collins, Jay Fry, and of course, Scott Dixon. Go ahead, yeah, Jay. Thank you, Mike. We got, a, we got another quick one that Mark would like oh. to... Pull in here. Just, this Thank you all. Really in in just a second, we'll have the chance to, I'm sure, for individual okay. interviews. We're going to excuse you two for just a second. Can I get A.J. Foyt to please come up here? And I think maybe Bobby Unser's here. And Robin Miller. Robin Miller, will you please come up here? And I know Mario Andretti is right here with me. So we're, we're switching okay. subjects for just a minute, and then I'm sure we can take questions. Yeah. Okay. It's a little breach of protocol. Stand up. But what the hell? <laughs>